You know, people have told me that this is extreme, but when I stopped buying underwear, that really changed my life in a positive way. I'm excited to share with you how that went. Hey team, welcome back to another episode. Today, I am going to be walking you through seven things that we no longer buy because we made a video with that exact same title a couple of months ago and y'all loved it. I'm also stoked to say that today's video is sponsored by Aspiration Bank. We will be talking about them more later in the video. Leah is going to be in this video, but she is working in the office right now. We just came back from a camping trip and <laughs> as you can see, we got our tent on the ground. We got the cooler, all of our camping equipment, laundry everywhere. So this might be a little more informal than our last video, but I hope to give you an idea of some of the things that we live without and have changed in our purchasing behaviors to make our lives more sustainable in the hopes that that helps you do some of the same things in your own life. And number one on that list are house plants. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is one of our two jade plants that we have in our house, along with a whole bunch of others that we talked about in our house plant tour. In that video, we explained that basically all of our plants came from our friends who were moving out of town when we were moving into this apartment. See, when you buy plants, it's just like so many other things. There are better plants to buy and worse plants to buy for the planet. Buying from grocery stores or department stores can give you a wide variety, but very likely those are going to be plants that were grown in a monoculture kind of environment and have a larger impact on the planet as a result. When you pick up a seedling from someone on Facebook Marketplace or you find some that are on the side of the road or what have you, you are not creating demand for more farmed plants. Basically, you're buying them secondhand and giving them a new life. Here, let me show you a few of our favorites. So if you watched our house tour, you might remember this plant was basically covered in blight. And since then we've cut off the leaves that were dying and we have all of these new leaves coming in and it's looking really happy. This is our Sideshow Bob plant that was basically entirely yellow and now it's getting a lot of really nice dark green leaves which is really great to see. On top of that, a number of you noticed that our Monstera plant is going crazy. All of these leaves are new here and there's even some cute new baby ones coming in down below. If you are interested in seeing more about our plant tour and how we have set up our house to be as eco-friendly and as plant-friendly as possible, there will be a link down in the description or you can just search my name plus plant tour and you'll find it on the YouTubes. What do you think of this for my interview? Do you think it's I think it looks amazing. I'm wearing a dress. <laughs> yeah, you're wearing a dress. <laughs> For someone who's only going to see this much of me. Leah is going to do an interview, but we're going to be talking about some things later with her. But uh, she's going to go do that, and we're going to talk about food. So Leah and I are very conscious to never buy delivery. Because, first of all, we live downtown, and most of the restaurants that we want to eat at, we can easily walk to and get pickup. But, number two is that Uber Eats and DoorDash and all those other delivery companies are actually pretty bad for businesses and the planet. But we're gonna talk about both here in a second. I made a full video a while back about trying to eat every single meal from Uber Eats for a two week period. And in that process, we learned a lot of stuff. Number one, Food delivery is insanely wasteful. I'm not gonna give away too much of that Uber Eats video because I think you should probably watch it, but this is a glimpse of the trash that we made during that time. But it's also not great for restaurants. It sounds like Uber Eats can be a bit of a necessary evil for businesses trying to make ends meet. Selling their food through Uber Eats can mean that sometimes they don't even make money on the dishes that they're selling. I talk about all of this and a full financial breakdown of what it costs me to eat just Uber Eats for two weeks in that full video, so I'll link that down below. But our third thing that we no longer buy is guns. Now, you may not know that Leah and I are pretty big gun enthusiasts. For a really long time, one of our favorite hobbies has been taking the old AK-47 out to the range and popping off a couple of rounds, you know? Really get the blood flowing, get the steam out, blow off some steam, you know? Get, and uh... What? 
<laughs> no, Leah and I are not gun enthusiasts, but there was a time when Leah and I held money in a bank account held by an institution that was heavily invested in, yes, weapons manufacturing. Now, of course, we were not aware of this in the moment, and likely a lot of you aren't either. That's because when you put your money into a bank account, it doesn't just sit there. Because banks are able to use 100% of the money that you deposit into your account as collateral for other investments. And that could be anything from fossil fuels to private prisons and, yes, weapons manufacturing. In fact, since 2016, big banks have invested over $3.8 billion into the fossil fuel industry. Oh no, that's a trillion. Oh my God. Uh, $3.8 trillion into fossil fuels. Sorry, pardon my slip up there. But fortunately, of course, there is an amazing way that you can avoid this if you live in the US. Aspiration is a digital banking alternative that allows you to manage your money in a way that reflects your values. They're still FDIC regulated, just like any other bank, but the difference is they're a registered B corporation and they're a 1% for the planet member. On top of this, they give 10% of all their earnings to charities. On their website, you'll see that they have two debit card options with no overdraft, maintenance, or other predatory fees. It also gives you the option to offset certain purchases like gas or round up to the dollar to plant trees with every purchase. Honestly, it's so great to be partnering with Aspiration for this video because I think there's a lot of things that people have to think about and where your money is sitting while you're busy going about your day is just something that you shouldn't have to worry about and they make it extremely easy. There is a special link down in the description for anyone who is interested in trying it out. Just go to joinaspiration.com forward slash Levi and you'll get an extra $50 when you sign up. Now I know that the majority of the people who are on the team are based in the US and that's a great option for you, but if you are Canadian or you're from some other part of the world, do some Googling. You might find something similar in your area, but you may also have access to a credit union. Credit unions are a great way to make sure that your money is staying within your local community. They typically support local organizations and there's a better chance that they're not invested in all that weird stuff that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna finish this laundry now. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Levi Hildebrand, TJIFM, telling you to like this video so that we can make more of them. Okay, thanks, bye. <sighs> so our next subject <clears throat> is car stuff. Now I know this isn't very specific, but uh, Leah and I don't own a car, and because we don't own a car, we avoid a lot of expenses that normally go along with it. Let me show you. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that Leah and I bought a Honda Element back last year and you might also notice that we haven't talked about it a lot since then and that's because turns out poor Earl was a bit of a lemon. If you uh, want to know the full story about that we made a post about it on Instagram but uh, basically what we learned with Earl is that owning a car is stressful, it's very expensive and we didn't really need one. So this is what we're driving now. So this is a minivan one block away from our building and we can use this whenever we want because it's a moto car share. So not only do we have access to trucks and cars, convertibles and minivans, but we also don't have to pay for any of the maintenance on those vehicles, the insurance on those vehicles. And if we get into an accident, we don't even have to worry about what happens to the vehicle after. You just walk away and call Moto to make sure that they can take care of it. But if you've never heard of a car share program before, let me give you a little breakdown. So the way that Moto works is basically everyone gets a fob that looks like this that gains you access to all of the cars that are featured on the app here. So from where we live, we have access to about five or six different cars within five or six blocks of where we live. Our average monthly cost using Moto is less than $200 a month, which is way cheaper than if we were using our own vehicle. I talked about this a lot more in a full video that Leah and I made about living without a car for a full year, and I highly recommend that you check it out if this is even a little bit interesting for you. But recently, something has changed that has sweetened the deal even more. So a lot of you may also know that Leah and I recently bought an apartment and in this apartment, we have one parking stall. 
Since we don't actually have a car that we need to put in that spot, we've rented it out to this person and they pay us $175 a month, which basically pays for the entire cost of our moto every single month. So not only are we saving money, not having to purchase, maintain, and insure our own vehicle, but because we are existing outside of the car culture norms, we're actually profiting from it as well. So the next things on our list involve Leah. I know all of you are excited, I am too. We are gonna go back inside now and see if she is done with her meeting. How did it go? It was good. I'm kind of sweaty because she's kind of like a big deal. Like I cited her in my PhD so many times. I'm like, So one of the things that Leah has stopped buying and for quite a while now are contact lenses. I know, like literally I'm wiping dust off of the top of this and I was like, where are they? So I don't know how everybody feels about glasses, but I think they're really hot. Like that was one of the first things that I said to you when well, we were first kind we of we first started dating i wore contacts almost exclusively and i wore contacts for almost a decade i have never been hit on more as to when i'm not that i'm condoning just don't randomly hit on people that's not great <laughs> but I've leah never gets been a lot of attention for her glasses yes yes i do i think i fulfill a lot of um librarian uh, fantasies <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna see all of Leah's glasses. So this is my like fun pair that I like to, I don't normally wear a lot of pink, but uh, it's my fun pink pair. But these are my daily drivers. Get in close, let's see them. Yeah, these are the daily drivers that have like little blue specks in them, which I like, I'm quite into, right? The border of a the tortoise, tortoise shell. shell. Yeah. Right, and then these ones, this is my old pair with the old prescription, but I can actually go to a local shop here uh, in Victoria and they can replace the lenses for me. Oh wow, they're dusty, but this is my oldest mm. pair. Honestly, the these time. are kind of the ones that first got me. I was like. <laughs> I mean, I can still see pretty well, actually. I'm kind of amazed. Look, I haven't gotten too much more blind. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be interested to see how I look with glasses when I inevitably stop being able to, oh. You look really cute with glasses. <laughs> Good God. You, you went straight dad core. It's really hard to see myself because <laughs> <laughs> it's like blurry. One. Very Clark Kent-esque. What does Clark Kent say? Does he say something? I don't know, he's Superman. Hmm. I'm Superman. <laughs> No, not when he's Clark Kent, he's Clark Kent. <laughs> oh, damn it. Plastic wrap alternatives. Um, so this is a stasher bag. It's a bit dirty. It's we, liter <laughs> we literally just ate cucumbers and carrots out of it, but it's like super handy and it's my favorite color. Yeah, and it's made of silicone. So this is a really durable plastic that lasts a long time so that it can be reused. And these are beeswax wraps. I love the beeswax wraps. I literally wrap all of our like veggies or cheese or whatever else that goes into the fridge. In a similar vein, these are uh, something called the Authentic Coquina Guard, which is basically a non-stick baking sheet alternative. Easy to like wipe down and clean. I also feel like we use less like olive oil and other things because you're not worried about it sticking to the pan. Absolutely. Another thing we've been doing in the kitchen lately is uh, bread. Because during the pandemic, Leah got into sourdough like so many people. But unlike all of those people, Leah has continued to make sourdough bread to this day. And this is it. It looks kind of gross, but. I know it does. But it's amazing. <laughs> A lot of you have asked for Leah's sourdough recipe and it's actually super easy. I literally just follow Alexandra's Kitchen simple sourdough recipe, and now it's like ingrained in my brain, and I just do that again and again. What's amazing about baking bread at home is that you avoid the need to, A, go out to the store and buy loaves of bread, and you avoid the potential packaging that comes with those loaves of bread, but also makes you appreciate your food so much more. That's why I always advocate, if you're able to make your own anything in the kitchen really, you should do that. Whether that's oat milk, salsa, but even just cooking your own food. Making stuff at home is going to be more sustainable and more healthy for you probably.
Well, I hope that this video has been interesting or even helpful for you. Uh, we were really hoping to do a lot more showing on this channel to bring you into our lives a little bit more to give you an insight into how we do things. And uh, it means a lot when you show up for these videos, you give them a like and you maybe even comment to let us know what you thought. Pro glasses, pro sourdough. Yeah. Right? These, yeah, all, all of this is amazing. Thanks so much for being here with us today and we will see you in the next one. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Your hand was in my face. Oh. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs>